Hello guys, typically on this channel on Friday there's a video from my office about career advice. But this time let's make an exception because I just came back from Larocon EU in Amsterdam where they announced a lot of interesting new things. And in this video I want to share my personal opinion on tools like Laravel Cloud, Laravel Starter Kits, Nightwatch, Fusion, Native PHP and others. I've written quite a big blog post of summary recap on Laravel Daily.com and I will link that in the description below. It is free, but 14 minutes read. And in this video, I will try to summarize just my opinion on them. And I'm talking specifically about four people, four talks that presented something new at Laracon. Taylor Otwell, Jess Archer, Aaron Francis and Simon Hemp. Let's start with Taylor. The first thing you need to know is February 24th is a very important day. Taylor called it the most important or the biggest day in Laravel history. On that day, they will release Laravel Cloud for everyone in public, Laravel 12, Laravel new starter kits, and also fresh Laravel.com homepage. Out of those four, two are not that important. The homepage design, I'm sure it will be brilliant and let's wait for it to be released and David Hill and the designer team at Laravel will totally do a brilliant job. Now, Laravel 12, Taylor didn't announce any new features and he told that the goal is to be stable and to have major release without any breaking changes. Basically, you should just run Composer update when it's released. But of course, you should wait for packages to update, which will take another few weeks, but not much to talk about in terms of Laravel 12. With Laravel starter kits, they're changing the philosophy from Breeze and Jestream being like separate products with different tech stacks inside of them to just one starter kit per tech stack. So there will be React starter kit, Vue starter kit, both using Inertia and Livewire. All three of them will use modern front-end libraries for UI, so React and Vue ones will use ChatCN and Livewire one will use Flux UI, which becomes partially free and open source. So Caleb Porzio agreed to release some of the Flux UI components for free as open source and as a part of the starter kit. So that's great news. So in my opinion, it's a great fresh update for visual design. For four years, we didn't have any visual updates for Breeze and Jetstream. So basically it's right about time. That said, of course, there will be people who got used to Breeze and Jetstream and they will of course be a bit disappointed with that choice of removing Breeze and Jetstream from the official starter kits. But don't worry, from what I understand, Breeze and Jetstream will still continue to be maintained, even given the fact that new starter kits don't contain any Blade options at all. There's only React, View, and Livewire, so no just plain Blade, which probably will be covered by Laravel Breeze at this point. Now let's move to Laravel Cloud. From Laracon stage, Taylor demonstrated a lot of awesome things in the cloud in the latest version. It's not released yet, it will be released on February 24th, as I mentioned, but he made a demo of how to release a project from GitHub to the cloud with custom domain, also how to configure things like database, cache, storage, queue jobs, scheduler, enable Laravel Octane with one checkbox. Also, cloud allows you to easily run one of artisan command, view logs, and one of the important parts is auto scaling, so you can provide the minimum and maximum of replicas or servers to have a predictable billing for your project. Basically, Laravel Cloud is presented as all-in-one dashboard to control your project without the need to SSH to the server probably ever. And finally, they released the pricing. So Laravel Cloud will have three plans, sandbox, production, and business with custom pricing. On sandbox plan, basically Laravel Cloud itself is free. You're paying only for the usage for your particular server that consists from the server itself and then additionally you pay for the database for storage for cache or what resources you're actually using it's hard to calculate exactly the pricing and i will definitely try to do that when it's released and compare that to other setups like DigitalOcean with Forge or something like that. But it sounds pretty reasonable. So Sandbox Plan is mostly for hobby or demo projects because you don't have the custom domain. But if you want to launch a production website like LaravelDaily.com or whatever on cloud, then you have to have a production plan which also adds $20 per month for the cloud itself. But on the surface, it seems like if you compare regular DigitalOcean with, for example, Laravel Forge versus cloud, cloud will be roughly the same or a little more expensive, which again sounds pretty reasonable for what amount of features they release in Laravel Cloud. 
And my opinion about what will happen when Laravel Cloud is released is twofold. So first, there will be obviously very big hype. It's actually already happening. People who have early access, they already are hyping and tweeting how awesome it is. This is part of the vibe of Laravel community, the first reaction for small projects. Indeed, it's a no-brainer. Just put GitHub repository and you have your project in the cloud. But we'll see when it's released how many businesses actually migrate to cloud or start projects on cloud. How do they report their pricing, how easy it is to migrate, what issues appear, and is it reliable? So I predict there will be initial hype, but also there will be companies and people who would be cautious at first until some official reviews or benchmarks appear. And also some of the features may be missing in the very beginning. For example, I do have early access, but I haven't tried Laravel Cloud yet because for now it's only Postgres database. There is no MySQL at the moment and my projects are most of them on MySQL or SQLite if it's a very quick one, but I don't use Postgres myself haven't done it for like 10 years or so. So that is a bit weird decision by them to release cloud with Postgres without MySQL. Although according to the latest survey by Tobias Petri, the state of Laravel, MySQL is used by more than 83% of developers. And PostgreSQL has only 29% in that survey. I've talked to the team at Laracon and before Laracon and apparently it's a technical thing. So it was easier for them to launch with PostgreSQL because it's kind of ready for auto scaling, hibernating, because a thing that I didn't mention on Laravel Cloud, if your database doesn't receive any requests over five minutes or whatever you configure, then it auto hibernates, which means at that point you don't pay for any compute and it will wake up with the next query and wake up process takes like couple of hundred milliseconds. So they successfully achieved that in PostgreSQL, but haven't done it in MySQL fully. So that will be launched two weeks, a few weeks after the official launch of Laravel Cloud. In my personal opinion, I would delay the launch to get better feedback when MySQL actually is released, because I think it will be a showstopper for a lot of projects to start Laravel Cloud right away on the day of the release. But we'll see, maybe I'm overreacting here and looking just at the numbers of popularity of MySQL. In general, in my opinion, Laravel Cloud team has done a fantastic job, but as with every new tool, especially such architectural decision, it's slow, especially in bigger companies. So we will see the actual impact of Laravel Cloud in six to 12 months, I guess. So for now, we're just in the beginning phase of Laravel Cloud. Also, Taylor mentioned on stage one more thing about inertia. Roughly a week ago, they acquired inertia from creator Jonathan to take full control of inertia as a first party package. Such merge was already happening behind the scenes slowly when Laravel core team members, Joe Tonnenbaum and others worked on inertia too, but now inertia is officially in the Laravel family, which probably guarantees better support for the future. The next thing that was presented was Laravel Nightwatch. Jess Archer on stage presented the latest version, which looks kind of amazing. It's hard to describe without actually clicking around, so I'll probably do a review whenever I get access, but they already announced the release date, which is May 2025. You can already sign up for the early access list, which I did, if you want to check it out earlier. But basically, Laravel Nightwatch is the first tool I've ever seen all in one dashboard for all the health of Laravel project. So requests, queues, jobs, queries, exceptions, logs, you name it. There's huge amount of menu items. But the main thing is that it's all interconnected. For example, you can watch the timeline of specific request divided by specific file of Laravel, whether some controller or model or whatever, how much time it took for each part of the request lifecycle. And I cannot even emphasize enough the graphs, the charts, the obvious visuals that will help you to identify bottlenecks in Laravel project. Before Nightwatch, it has been done by various separate other tools like Sentry. We are using Bugsnag in our team. Also, we're using Laravel Pulse. And by the way, Nightwatch kind of evolved from Laravel Pulse, but Laravel Pulse will still be updated and maintained and will not disappear. And also behind the scenes, I can comment that there were two booths at Laracon EU, one for the cloud and one for the Nightwatch, and Nightwatch was packed all the time. I wanted to come say hi to Jess, Tim, and the team, and it was almost impossible 
pretty much all the conference. There were many more people interested in Nightwatch than Laravel Cloud. Maybe we can make some conclusions from it, maybe not, we'll see. For Nightwatch, as impressive as it sounds, there's one unanswered question, the price. They didn't announce the pricing, just told me that they're working on that, but if the price is reasonably comparable to other similar tools, I think it will be no-brainer for myself, other companies, and individual developers to migrate to Nightwatch or start using it for new projects. And finally, my opinion on another two tools released by non-Core Laravel team member, but actually it's even hard now to know who is or who isn't on the core team. There are so many. So let's talk about Aaron Francis, who presented his creation called Fusion. And Fusion is another new alternative to work with PHP and JavaScript. In this case, Aaron managed to build a tool, a package that allows you to write PHP code inside of your Vue.js component. Pretty impressive demo. Sorry, I'm losing my voice after two days of conference. Anyway, great, great job. Genius solution. It was even a wow moment from the audience when they saw that it actually works. And I'm pretty sure the Fusion will have its fans. It actually looks the same as Livewire Vault with Laravel Folio for routing just for Vue.js and React.js is coming as well. It will be a free package available on Monday and also Aaron launched a community group called Backstage to support his new open source work. So Fusion is not the only thing he released. There's also a package called Solo. You probably have seen that on YouTube or Twitter. So he's fully back in open source work in addition to his courses in TryHard Studios. My opinion on Fusion is twofold. So first, it's, as I said, great genius idea that it actually works. That said, I'm not sure how many people will actually use it in their production projects. It's similar to Livewire Vault that has pretty niche usage. After quite a lot of time since Vault release, I'm yet to see a very wide adoption. So I think something like that will happen with Fusion. Personally, I don't like that idea that all should be in one file, both logic and visual design. It may work for smaller projects, but for bigger structure, I prefer to click between files instead of scrolling up and down the same one file. But this is my personal preference. With Fusion now, the market has one more option to work with PHP and JavaScript in Laravel. And finally, Simon Hamp showed us how to create a mobile app with PHP with his native PHP package. On stage, he demonstrated a project with Laravel and Livewire that was compiled into mobile application and demonstrated in live mode on stage. Not only that, he showed a screenshot that his other application was successfully approved by Apple App Store, which makes it probably the first PHP mobile app in the Apple App Store. That said, the project is in pretty early stage, only for iOS, no Android for now, and it's not a free tool. If you want to get that early access, currently at the time of shooting this video, you can join it for $250, which may sound like a lot, but at the same time, Simon is putting a lot of energy and effort into that. And if he does deliver in upcoming months, I guess we may have a PHP mobile revolution in the upcoming years. Of course, in the very beginning, companies will not trust like serious applications to a new tool instead of using like widely adopted React Native, Flutter or whatever. But with the main technical possibilities kind of proven, now Simon has a proof of concept and we'll see what happens in the upcoming months and years. So yeah, that was a lot. I thought it would be short video. It became not so short. I'm sorry for that. But I hope I delivered you the overview, the breakdown of what happened and what is my opinion about those new products. Now it's time for you to share your opinion. So be active in the comments. What do you think about all those new additions to Laravel ecosystem? Would you use them in the future and why? Let's discuss in the comments below. That's it for this time and see you guys in other videos.